Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. That thumbnail, I am not strong enough for that thumbnail. <laughs> so I'm actually really glad that some of them are Kindle books and audiobooks because they would have not fit in frame if I had them all physically. <laughs> so it's been a great reading month. It has been one of the best reading months I've had like ever I think and I think last month was really good too. I really think it's because of the DNFs. Although I didn't have that many DNFs this month. Like there were some like before 50 page DNFs that obviously are included in here, but generally I had a really great time reading this month. And I was just like, when I wasn't feeling it, I was like, no, we're not doing this. <laughs> we're not doing this. And I feel like that's really finally starting to turn my reading around. Cause I feel like for most of the year, I was fighting with myself to not DNF stuff still. And like, even though it said I was DNFing stuff, a lot of the stuff I was DNFing was like 150 pages into the book, 200 pages into the book of a book I already knew I wasn't enjoying. So I feel like I'm finally at that point where if it's not working for me pretty early on, I'm like, this isn't it. They're like, this isn't it. So this month I feel like finally, finally we have this like, oh my gosh, great reading. <laughs> And I didn't try and force these other books that are not included in here. With that being said, I do have four DNFs, which is, it's not that many. And most of them were before 100 pages. So I still have to include them though, because it was after 50. Then for the books that I actually read this month, which is crazy thinking about, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Technically 13 books plus a novella. Well, I guess there's two novellas in here. Whatever. We're gonna still say 14 books. So good. So good. Like, and my lowest rated one is a three star. That's what DNFing does. <laughs> That's what DNFing does. Because I can tell you the three books that I DNFed, they would have been low ratings. So I'm gonna struggle making a worse books of the year list, which I feel like is a fantastic problem to have. It's going to be DNFs. I'm going to have to just do like a DNF and worst books video together instead of separately. I am so excited. <laughs> okay, this might take a while. I'm going to try and not like I feel like I've talked about most of these books in vlogs or in other things. So we're just going to skate across these and I'll let you guys know where to find the books if you want to know more about them, I guess. So let's start with the DNFs first and let's talk about the non-physical DNF that I had. I had an arc of It Will Only Hurt For A Moment, that one's really hard to remember, by Delilah S. Dawson. This was a massive disappointment. This is in one of my Halloween vlogs. I think it's in my second one, part two. Halloween vlog part two. I go into great depths of why I did not like this and why this did not work for me. But this one is following our main character who is an artist who goes to this like artist retreat where there's like eight or nine other artists and some creepy stuff is, is kind of happening to her. It's supposed to be horror. Okay, I would say it's horror, but it's got a thrillery aspect to it. Like, it's basically this mystery of, like, who's messing with her and what's up with the history of this retreat. And that's kind of what it's about. It's It was just honestly insufferable, and it was very poorly written, which is weird because I loved Bloom and I loved Guillotine by the same author. And I don't understand where the writing went. Like, Bloom was written so beautifully, and It Will Only Hurt for a Moment was, like, I, it was like a different person wrote it. That's how weirdly written it was. So very unimpressed. I really hated all the characters, which has really killed the story for me. And it was just a very generic plot line. Like I feel like there was nothing special at all about the plot line. And it dealt with abuse in a very strange way. So I wasn't a fan of that either. So this one just didn't work. I, I got pretty far into that one though. I got about 50% into that one because I was refusing to give up. So, but I, it was it was gonna be a one star. It was gonna be a one star if I finished that one. So I did DNF that one. Onto the physical DNFs. I literally just DNF something this morning. It is November 1st, however, I wanted to DNF it last night, but I just didn't want to quit. <laughs> so I ended up DNFing it first thing this morning. So I'm counting it as an October DNF because I also just don't want to hang on to it for a whole month to talk about it because I'm not going to remember why I didn't like it. So I'm counting it with October DNFs because I should have DNFed it last night. But first we have, I was a teenage slasher to no one's surprise. This was in the Halloween October vlog part one. 
again, not a surprise. I just don't like Stephen Graham Jones' writing. And I think this is like the, this is the final straw. This is the, okay, I've tried everything I possibly can to like his books. And it is just his writing style. I get why people like these. I think they're really interesting. The premise is really, really cool. But the execution and the writing is just so awful for me specifically that I, I didn't feel fair finishing this book and rating it something really, really low because I know it's not for me. Next up, we have a really sad one and it actually comes from a scrapped vlog. So I, I forgot about that because I feel like I've talked about this in length, but I technically haven't to you guys because it was scrapped. So I did DNF Masters of Death and this one didn't work for me for a couple of reasons. So just following our main character, I didn't tell you what I was a teenage slasher, but I gotta remember to like actually tell you what the books are about very briefly. <laughs> but I feel like it's pretty obvious from what it was. He's a teenage slasher. <laughs> it's from the point of view of a slasher. So anyway, Masters of Death, DNF this one. Very sad about this one because this one had a lot of promise early on. This is following see and here's the problem this is following a couple of different characters but i would say our main characters are viola and don't even remember his name what's his name what's his name fox fox is the grandson or god's godson the godson of death and viola is a struggling vampire who is a real estate agent and she ends up coming into possession, not into possession, but she's trying to sell a house that turns out to be haunted by a guy who was murdered. And so it's a mystery trying to figure out who this guy is. And it's also like dealing with the drama about Fox and death and what Fox is going through. The problem is you didn't need all that. <laughs> like I feel like all you needed was Viola's point of view and the mystery, but then you added Fox and friends of Fox and then these like archangels and then death's point of view and then Viola's friends' point of view. It was a mess. It was an absolute mess. This one started out so promising. This was like, oh my God, five star. Oh my God, is this going to be like Alone with You in the Ether where I finally found another Livy Blake that I'm obsessed with? No, <laughs> this started going down the route of Atlas Six where it's just so convoluted and there's too many people there's too there's too many people in this book like why does every single person and their brother have a point of view in this book and it switches point of views in the same chapter which is one of my pet peeves i hate that i absolutely hate that <laughs> so you can get away with it if it has like a really strong plot but the plot was even wishy-washy and I wasn't sure exactly what the plot was supposed to be, like what I was supposed to be focused on because every single person had their own like plot and stuff going on, which is why it sucked. <laughs> so unfortunately, I do think a lot of people could like this compared to, like I don't get why people like the Alice Six. I'm just gonna say that, like good if you like it. I don't understand why people like that series. I could see why people would like this one. I think this one is a lot better written than the Atlas Six. I just hated everything else about it, but I can at least see it. But yeah, that was a DNF. I was pretty bummed about this one. And the final one, the one that I DNF this morning, basically last night, is Bloodguard. I got to 70 pages with this one. I was also, this was supposed to be part of a Red Tower video where I read basically all of Red Tower's books because I've loved Fourth Wing, I'm 100% or I was 100% of five stars with Red Tower and Tangled Publishing because I gave five stars to Fourth Wing, Iron Flame, Apprentice to the Villain and Assistant to the Villain. I loved every single one of those. So I like have been buying uh, these books and it was a mistake, <laughs> apparently. Uh, 70 pages and I couldn't do it. There literally was a quote in here. I don't have my Kindle. My Kindle, I had it highlighted, but she literally meets this guy and one of the first times they even talk in her head, she's like, and his butt cheeks could snap a magic wand in half and make a wish. And I was like, oh no, oh, absolutely not, <laughs> absolutely not. And maybe if that was the only one, I could just be like, okay, maybe it was just a lapse in judgment and writing. <laughs> maybe she just like let herself go with that. Maybe, maybe it was an accident that was supposed to be not included in there. She was just having fun when she was drafting it and they accidentally left it. No, there's a couple quotes like that in like three chapters that I was like, oh no, oh no, no, this is bad. This is bad. This is scary bad, <laughs> which is unfortunate because the opening was brilliant. And I wish that they had stuck with kind of that theme. So it's following our main character, Leith, and our other main character, Maeve. And it opens with Leith 
And it was awesome. He's a gladiator who, well, he's basically a gladiator who's trying to become a blood guard, which is the royals. A lot of poor people, but it's also prisoners who basically sign their life away to try and become a blood guard in these death games. And it originally wasn't to the death, but there's been a lot of political upheaval and political intrigue. So it sounds great. It sounds great. And it opens with Leith and this crazy gladiator battle. And you kind of get the lay of the land pretty early on about why everything has changed and what's going on. But the second, the second they put, they remove Leith from the gladiator area, he turns into just like kind of a disgusting human. And then you put Maeve and him together and it just gets worse and worse. And I just, I, I don't like it. Just very icky to me. It was very icky how they spoke. And it just didn't feel... Uh, it didn't, I don't know, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel right and I immediately got the ick between them and they're gonna be the couple. So I was like, this isn't, it's a romanticy. This is not gonna work if I already hate them together. <laughs> so I DNF that one. Again, very sad because this is such a beautiful book and I've been waiting for this one. This is one that I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna love this. I'm chasing that fourth wing high. Like, I'm still chasing that fourth wing high. Okay, let's move into... I think that is every... Yes. Okay, let's move into books that I've actually read. As usual, we are going to go from lowest to highest. I think that's just, like, the easiest way to do it and the most fun way to do it. And so we're starting at three stars because I don't have any ones or twos. Right? It's amazing. So our lowest rated book for the month is Where He Can't Find You. This is in, in the Halloween vlog part two. It's just fine. It's following our main character. It's very... It could have been very Stranger Things. It does have that vibes early on, but the length and the execution of this just didn't work. And I also think this could have been way better as a graphic novel or a TV show. I think this would have worked way better if you could physically visualize what was going on, which is why I think they've put, they literally put these little comic strips in here and they're so good. Like they're so interesting. And I, that's the, to me, the most interesting part of the book. So I definitely wish that it had been a graphic novel. I think it would have been a lot better. But yeah, it's following a group of like teenagers and a new girl into town. And it's this town that you can't really like leave from, but there's a serial killer rampaging through the town and people go missing and turn up in super gruesome ways. And our group of teenagers decide to figure out who or what it is and how to stop it. And they kind of rope in the new girl. So it's very, uh, it was too long. That's the problem when you have with these. It did a really, really good job of being super creepy early on because it doesn't show what's really going on. You just get a lot of speculation. So when something does happen, you're like, oh, like really seriously, what is it? But the longer it went on, the less interesting it got and the less scary it got. That's kind of how I feel about horror books. If a horror book is too long, it just to me becomes less and less scary the more it goes on. The less I know, the less I see in a horror book, the creepier it is because it's the, the fear of the unknown to me is like the creepiest thing. It's how a lot of horror movies are. Don't show the monster right away. <laughs> just don't do it. The fear of what it is, is, is almost better sometimes than what the thing actually is or the person is. Well, this did a good job of that, but it was too long. It drew it out way too long. It just kept going. This book had so many opportunities to like end <laughs> and it just kept going. So it was fine, but it's nothing that I, I, I would be like, it's fine. It, it really is just fine. That's actually my only three star. Everything else is a 3.5 in this category. So I would say probably, I would say The Lamplighter is next. I did read that one. That was an arc that I'd kind of been putting off because I hadn't heard really anything of it. It was my final arc from like, I am totally caught up with my arcs now. It was my final one that was like from way before. <laughs> I finally decided to read it for the first October Halloween vlog. And it was, it was fine. Like it was, I actually really, really liked it. It's very gothic old town. So it's following our main character who is the town's lamplighter and no electricity, nothing like that. So it's just, it's just got this really gothic and it takes place in this old whaling village and it's just such a cool vibe. And I was legitimately shocked at one of the twists. 
My problem and why this book didn't get a four star or higher is because I didn't love the ending. I th And this one also dragged out a little bit too long. There was so much gaslighting in the main character that it got obnoxious. Like she didn't have a single person really on her side. <laughs> and it was just kind of a depressing ending. So just all of that together, like I wanted a win for her because of how awful everyone treated her all the time so because she didn't really get that really big win that i wanted for her that's kind of why it was brought down to a 3.5 next up which is definitely borderline three is the adventures of amina al sarafi this was our book club pick for september so there's a whole vlog on that uh non-spoilery thoughts would be this is just fine <laughs> like it's it really is just okay. I think the writing is very dry. I think it could have done some more fun things with this. And I would not call this the adventures of Amina al Sarafi. I would call this the slight happenings of Amina al Sarafi. <laughs> like, there's really not that much adventurous. They like it's weird. I don't I don't know how to describe this book. It's definitely cozy fantasy. And I I was not expecting that going into this book, and I think that hurt how I felt about the book overall because you're following Amina al Sarafi and you're following her in her older age when she's already past her pirating days and she has to get her crew back together to go find somebody and that's what it is it's just this big excursion and you guys know me I don't love travel in my books and this was entirely travel like entirely travel <laughs> and I liked the found family aspect I liked the crew I enjoyed the characters but overall there was just such a like for how massive this book is there was so much missing that could have been done in here that should have like I wanted the stakes to be higher I just wanted to actually feel like I was adventuring <laughs> in the book and it just felt it was cozy fantasy there was no stakes I felt whatsoever and then the ending was wonky like I don't know if I could actually walk you through exactly what happened in like the end fight scene it was weird like it, it was very strange and there was also like a section that felt like an lsd induced hallucination and it felt so out of place in the book that i was just kind of sitting there like what is happening like why is this happening so not the biggest fan of this one i feel like this actually should be probably a three star I'm gonna leave it at 3.5 because that's what I had rated it for before and I did rate, read this at the beginning of the month so it's been quite a while since I read this. It feels like a lifetime ago <laughs> that I read this book. Next up we have The Debutantes. This was another arc. I think I didn't read this for anything. This was just a for me read. This is a young adult thriller and this one was fun. I've been trying to find young adult. I've, I've stopped requesting young adult thrillers because I think I just really haven't been enjoying them. I haven't been enjoying them because they are the same thing over and over again. It's rich kids being jerks to the slightly poorer kid on scholarship at their school. That's literally what thrillers in the young adult category, that is like the only thing they are. Like that is, that is literally almost it. <laughs> <laughs> like put it in any setting and that's what it is and this was basically the same thing but I had more fun with this this is the first book I've read in a while it had multiple points of view it had multiple points of view over two like two is normally like I like two and I like one and two anything over I start getting annoyed I actually liked the three points of view I do think they did get a little bit mixed up I did have a little bit hard time keeping track of who is who because they kind of read very similarly like you have three girls who are somewhat similar and yeah it kind of felt that way <laughs> but this one is taking place in New Orleans which is such a cool setting I think the setting is really what helped it and kind of the weird turn it took it didn't take this normal like oh rich kids just having terrible uh reasons for killing people kind of thing this took a different turn and i actually really enjoyed it even though it was very it was very far-fetched but i think that's why i had fun with it and i think that's like looking back at some of my young adult thrillers that i really liked i feel like a lot of them are far-fetched <laughs> so maybe that's just what i like now is just ridiculous in young adult thrillers yeah so you're following three girls who were part of this like they were debuting part of this like very exclusive club kind of thing and there was a murder the previous year and now there's a disappearance and they're trying to figure out if they're connected what's going on and it's it's interesting 
it's really interesting. I do think the ending lost a little bit of the plot. Otherwise, it could have been a four star. But this is definitely three and a half. And I definitely enjoyed my time right reading it. And I would definitely recommend you going to try it if you want to read a young adult thriller. Next up, and the last 3.5 until we go into fours is Thorn Hedge. I finally got to this. I literally was just sitting there and I was crocheting and nothing on TV was interesting me. So I was like, okay, let me just pick like a short novella that I can listen to. And I was like, oh, I, I haven't read any fantasy T. Kingfisher and I have a sorceress to call. I have Nettle and Bone, but Thorn Hedge was the smallest and I didn't have like that much time to listen to it. So I was like, okay, let's do a little interlude because I was reading all these horror books. I want to read something else. And so I listened to this and it was fun. Like, I don't think it was anything particularly great. I, it almost felt like I was listening to a little fairy tale. Like there weren't any like real big emotional stakes in here. But I enjoyed like listening to this little fairy tale. So if you just have some like free time, you want to listen to something you may not get super connected to. Like it was definitely like, I definitely felt on the outside of the story. I would still pick this up. I think it was a cute way of telling a story and I just, I had a fun time with it. And it's following, following our main character Toadling and it's it's just her story <laughs> it's her story and her dealing with a very annoying prince sometimes and it's just cute i mean that's really what it is it's just cute moving on to four stars and the first four star i want to talk about is the like very short novella i would say almost short story i think it was like 65 pages it i finally read the lost i think it's sisters yes the lost sisters by holly black and that is the like in between story or the I don't remember exactly when it's supposed to be, but I think it's an in-between story between the cool prince and the wicked king. And it's Taryn's kind of side of the story and an apology to Jude and why she did what she did. And it's all the backstory between Taryn and this, I can't say who it is because it actually is kind of a spoiler, uh, between Taryn and her romantic interest that you don't know is a thing until the end of the cruel prince. It's kind of a huge shock. And it's so well done. People hate it. I don't get why people don't like this. I feel like it's because they don't like Taryn, which is understandable. She is the most obnoxious character. She was still obnoxious in A Prisoner's Throne, like in that series. But I really like how it was written. I like the apology. I love the explanation. I feel like I finally understood stuff that was happening behind the scenes that we didn't get to see. So I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really great. And I loved being back with the characters. It really made me want to read Royal Prince all over again. Like I may do that. Reading A Prisoner's Throne this month and then reading The Lost Sisters, it just put me back in this world that I was like, I want to reread it. <laughs> I want to reread The Cruel Prince. So that may be something I do in December if, because December is going to be a chill month. I'm going to just read like anything I want to. It's not going to be like forced reading anything. So I may read that. Next up, we have Diavola. This one is definitely on the line between a four and a three and a half. But I think for the overall story and how it ended and what it did, it gets a four. I really enjoy this. I think this is one of those horror books that really kind of piques my interest and it really tells you my type of taste in books in horror books so it's following our main character who is going on a family vacation with her very unlikable very out of touch family and it is such a pain and they end up going to a haunted house and it's so annoying like their family are the absolute worst people you could imagine like these are the type of people you would go on vacation and like some of them would end up dead at the end because you could not stand being in the same building as them let alone room and it just it did everything really well it it's a lower because they were that annoying like like it almost took it to a point of like too much where it was unbearable i can see people dnfing this straight up because they just cannot go on reading about this family but i love what it tells you about the end of the story it really is about how just because you have blood relatives doesn't mean that they're really your family like some people just do not have your best interests at heart and you need to let those people go and that's what this is about is letting go of that toxicity and the people who are kind of ruining your life and it was just really good. And I would recommend this to pretty much anyone who wants to get into horror. It's very horror light. It is definitely about more of the family drama and what's going on there. There are some creepy moments. 
legitimately there are some creepy moments but that's not really the point of the book the point of the book is like family horror next up in a similar vein this is borderline for 3.5 stars i would say this one is higher like i'm again i'm going in order this is probably more solidly a four star than diavola this one was just really good this was a really well written book i think i'm trying to remember why i gave it a four not a five and i think the problem is it isn't super memorable i'm trying to remember every like i remember everything that happened in diavola and i'm I'm struggling to remember everything that's happening in this one, but I do talk about this one and Diavola in my second. Mm? No, Diavola was the first Halloween vlog. House of Hunger is the first thing I talk about in the second Halloween vlog if you want to know more about it. This is following our main character who becomes a blood mage for a very wealthy family, and it's basically people who are their blood is let and the wealthy drink it and it's supposed to give them vitality and heal sicknesses and that kind of stuff and it's just who it's good <laughs> it's good i feel like this book is what i wanted a dowry of blood to be because a dowry of blood was just fine for me this is more what i wanted from that story and this is about female power found family and sticking up for yourself and knowing your worth and i just love stories like that again i think this is this could have been a phenomenal fantasy story. I think it's definitely horror. There's a lot of creepy stuff that happens. More of like a mystery. Like you're trying to figure out exactly what's going on and being gaslit by people and being tricked and the vulnerable, like what, what happens in those types of situations and how these super strong people can be tricked into situations and them not even realizing it. And it's just a story of abuse. I mean, that's really what it is. And it's done in such a just amazing way that it's just so good. It really is just really, really good. And I would recommend this. I would definitely check trigger warnings though. There's a lot of trigger warnings in here. Next up, we have the spell shop. I actually like my other cover better. <laughs> I actually read this and then immediately bought the like traditional like spray edge cover that you can get anywhere and this was fun this was fun this is probably my favorite cozy fantasy I've read since Emily Wilde's this was just a really good time and I actually really recommend the audiobook I also lent it to my mom my mom just finished it and she loved it like she absolutely loved it she did think the ending went a little bit too long and I completely agree with her and that is one of the reasons that I gave it a four star I also didn't love the beginning I struggled quite a bit getting into this book but it is following our main character Keela I think it's Keela she has a talking spider plant and she is kind of she deals with like this big fire at the beginning where she protects all these books and brings them back to her like home island which is a very out of the way place and she kind of relearns how to be a part of this society and just kind of to, to re be a person again because she's a very introverted very sheltered person and that's why I really struggled with it at the beginning because I think this author did a little bit of a disservice to introverted people because she made Keela just straight up rude like very nasty and I was really, I really did not like Keela at the beginning of this book. So I'm really glad her personality switched very quickly. Like she changed personalities very, very quickly. Otherwise this probably would have been a DNF because I really did not like Keela at the beginning. So I would say if you are struggling to get into this one, try to get through the first hundred pages and then see if your mind changes. Cause to me, the whole story transforms around that time. Next up, we have my favorite four star because this was definitely borderline five, but I think it went off the rails a little bit. And that is the dead take that Adrian Cassandra call with another win. Although I'm glad you guys in my comment section, this was in book vlog one for Halloween. A lot of you guys said that Richard Cadry is a really good writer. So I'm definitely going to pick up a Richard Cadry. There's quite a few of you who talked about it and I had never heard of him before. So that's really, really cool. But yet again, another win from Cassandra call. This was so much fun. <laughs> this is like a grotesque version of a deadly education like the humor and the monsters not the actual being in the school but the main character is very <laughs> similar this is just a great time and it makes the grotesque stuff really funny which is like my super vibe i love that following our main character who is a basically a monster hunter a demon hunter and she kind of gets these little jobs where she goes and she has to use these crazy spells the magic system is insane don't really understand it but i didn't really need to because it just was so cool this whole world is so interesting and she's kind of at odds with this guy who's giving her the jobs 
and it just develops into this overarching evil plotline kind of thing. And I do think it went off the rails at the end. I don't think it needed to do what it did fully, but it still was great. It still was great and I cannot wait for a second book. Like I am dying for the second book in this series. The top four star, the top four star that I read this month, the Prisoner's Throne. I would say this is pretty close with the Dead Take the A Train. I actually really enjoyed getting back into the story. I had put this off for a year because I did not think I was going to like it because I did not love The Stolen Air and I did like this one better, but it tried to make me not like it better. <laughs> this is one of those weird duologies where Holly Black did something super weird for this. So in the first one, you're following Ren and her and Oak end up going through this really long journey to go deal with stuff with this, with this court. And in this one, it left on, on the coolest cliffhanger. So I was so excited to pick this up and get Ren's point of view about what is going on at the end of the previous book. This does not take place in Ren's point of view at all. There are not a single point of view is from, not a single chapter is from Ren's point of view. Like, what was that decision? This is entirely written from Oak's point of view, which I really don't care about. <laughs> The problem is the plot was so good in this. This would have been five stars if it was from Ren's point of view. Absolutely five stars. But I, or dual point of view. I really, what I wanted was Ren's and Oak's point of view in this because that, like, to me, that shows the plot, like, developing and the story developing as a whole. Because I feel like that's my favorite types of series where you have one point of view in the first book and then over the whole series, it develops with more and more points of view. Instead, we just got a totally different point of view which was very jarring at the beginning, but it ends up getting a four because I really did love the plot. <laughs> I really, really love the plot. I just do think there wasn't much tension towards the end because it was relying on you not knowing what Ren was going to do in a situation, but because you got to know Ren so well in the first book, it didn't, you knew what she was gonna do and it wasn't gonna be anything bad. Like, really, that's what it was. So I do talk about it more and I have a whole spoiler-free and spoiler vlog of this duology because <sighs> it was something. It was something and I always have to talk about Holly Black books. <laughs> and now we're moving on to the five stars. First up, we have the low. Again, I'm going from the lowest five star to the highest five star. It was pretty easy to rank them this month, but I have three. I have three five stars. Do you know how exciting that is? That is so exciting. The Gathering by CJ Tudor. This is our October 2024 book club pick. So I have a whole spoiler vlog for that if you want to know all the spoilers for this and all my thoughts. This was so good. I actually even bought my own copy. I originally got it from the library because I didn't think I was going to like it <laughs> or I didn't think I'd enjoy it as much as I did. But this is so good. This is taking place in a secluded Alaskan town and we have our main character who is like a vampire detective. She's not a vampire, but she goes from place to place and she looks at these cases where the government may try and hold a culling of vampire clans nearby if they like kill citizens and stuff. So she goes and makes sure that the kill is a justified kind of like, hey, yes, we can call a culling because this clan committed murder, etc. So she goes in and decides what kind of killing it is, what kind of punishment, etc. So she comes to this town and it's just a very complicated case. And there's like a lot of strife between the town and the vampires. And it's just so good. Like there's so much history and backstory and interesting things. And I love the detective fiction in this. Thought it was so much fun. I love the mystery. I was legitimately shocked by both twists. They they got me with the red herrings. They 100% got me with the red herrings in this book. And I loved it. I loved every second. It's so rewarding to be shocked by a book. And this one got me twice. Like twice. So I recommend this one. I, I think a lot of people are going to struggle with this one. I feel like I'm definitely on my own with this one a little bit about how much I love this, but I did love it and I have to recommend it just because if you like detective fiction, if you liked All the Sinners Bleed, I think you might enjoy this one a lot. It's got a lot of similar vibes, just add vampires. Next up, we have the book that broke my brain. I'm still recovering. I'm still recovering and I have a whole spoiler explain the entire plot of this book. We used to live here. I adore this book. I love it. I cannot wait for the next anything that he writes to come out. I am following him on Reddit and his pages on Reddit and everything. And it was just so good. And I, you should not know anything before going into this book. You should just read this book and then go and watch the breakdown and then read it again. <laughs> 
like that is my recommendation for reading this book. It is the little that you should know and it is following our main character who just bought this house with her partner and a family shows up and the husband says, hey, I used to live here. Can I show my family around the house? And it turns into chaos literally the second after that. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. If you love conspiracy theories, haunted house things, being confused, this is the book for you. <laughs> and then my final book that I haven't talked about anywhere, except I have talked about it with my friend because she is currently reading it. She might be done with it already. Uh, Dinner for Vampires by Bethany Joy Lenz. I feel like I haven't talked about it too much on this channel, but I'm a huge One Tree Hill fan. Like, Oh my gosh, obsessed with it. So when I saw that Beth Bethany Joy Lenz, who plays Haley James in the series, was coming out with a book, I immediately got it on audiobook. <laughs> and I listened to it in one day. Obsessed with it. And she should be an audiobook narrator for other things. Like, she is such a good audiobook narrator. I highly recommend the audiobook. I did get a physical copy from Book of the Month to go next to my Britney Spears copy. Because they're both amazing and this was easily one of my favorite books I've read in a while. It was so well done. It was so interesting. I loved seeing the behind the scenes. I will say if you go into this book wanting more One Tree Hill stuff, you're not going to get it. There are a couple of like golden gems or nuggets in this book about One Tree Hill. I loved it. You also had Chad Michael Murray voicing himself in this sometimes and James Lafferty also voicing himself in this sometimes, which was really, really cool. But there really isn't that much about One Tree Hill because she really was so absorbed in this cult that she was not like super involved with the show as much as like you would think she was like I'm sure there's a lot more stuff she could talk about she could probably write a whole book about behind the scenes of One Tree Hill but she was so focused on her cult while filming that she missed out on a bunch of stuff with the cast it's so good it's it's so good and I think it was done in a really respectful way and a really smart way because she could have aired out, I feel like, a lot of people's business, but she changed the names. And that could have been for legal reasons. That probably was partially for legal reasons. But she changed the name of literally almost everybody except for her co-stars in One Tree Hill. And she had nothing but nice things to say about her co-stars in One Tree Hill. It wasn't like this, oh, they were terrible. They were doing this, which is fun. Like you love reading about that kind of stuff. It's drama. But I think this definitely showed, she showed what she wanted to show. Like she talked about the cult and that is really what she wanted to talk about. And I think it was done phenomenally. So if you are at all interested in this, I would 100% go with the audiobook route and pick it up and listen to it. And it's it's really good. It really is. And there are some very interesting One Tree Hill things that she did talk about that I was like, <laughs> like I was freaking out about. And my friend who's an even bigger one, she's the one who actually, she was the one who actually had me watch One Tree Hill. She was having a meltdown while reading the book. <laughs> So she's had a great time. I had a great time. Definitely five star favorite book of the month. I loved it. And yeah, I would highly recommend that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had a great October reading month. Definitely let me know down in the comments below what you thought about October, what you read in October. You can tell me all your books or your favorites, your least favorites, everything that you want to tell me. I will definitely read it. And yeah, if you have any recommendations based off of all the books that I've talked about. Yeah, it was just a great reading month. I feel like it was such a cozy. It was a really good October, I feel like. It was really fun. I feel like last year was so hard in October. October was, it was a very hard month last year. That I was so happy I finally had like a really good October. I love Halloween, I love it. So I feel like I was really able to celebrate this year, my favorite month. <laughs> and now we're going into November, I love November. November is my birthday month. So I'm pretty excited. But anyway, that is everything I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And definitely make sure to leave that comment down below so I can see the stuff that you read in October and what you plan to read in November. Yeah, that is everything I have today. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.